Hi, this is Hank Adi, Technical Support Manager and Applications Engineer for Mesh Dynamics. Aside from being one of the smallest mesh nodes on the market and having such a low power consumption, the MD4000 is an extremely versatile device that is used in a broad range of applications. In this webcast, I will be explaining why the MD4000 is so versatile, as well as how it is used in these various applications. Topics we will cover encompass the following. Mesh architecture, including first, second, and third generation mesh nodes. Modular mesh framework. Backhaul only mesh nodes. Mesh nodes with 2.4 GHz service radios. Relay mesh nodes with multiple downlink radios. Root mesh nodes with multiple downlink radios. And finally, mobile mesh nodes. We start with mesh architecture. Here, I will explain the basic differences between first, second, and third generation mesh nodes. Here, we see the illustrated differences between first, second, and third generation mesh nodes. First generation mesh nodes have one radio per node to perform all wireless functions, including sending and receiving traffic to and from wireless clients, as well as other mesh nodes. Now, since there is only one radio to perform these functions, all clients and nodes must be on the same channel. Since all devices are on the same channel, only one device can transmit at a time, else there will be interference on the network. Now, This is a very inefficient process, which equates basically to walkie-talkie technology. If multiple hops are required in the network, there will be a severe degradation in bandwidth as the number of hops increases. Second generation mesh nodes are a slight improvement from first generation mesh nodes in the sense that an additional radio is incorporated on the node to handle backhaul functionality. This is typically a 5 GHz radio. Now, Although this allows the node-to-node -node backhaul traffic to flow separate from the client's node traffic, which is typically 2.4 GHz, all backhaul radios are still on the same channel. Now, again, only one backhaul radio can transmit at a time when sending traffic through the mesh. Still, there is a severe bandwidth degradation in the network as the number of hops increases. Third generation mesh technology offers a substantial improvement from first and second generation technologies. Not only do the client and backhaul functions work on different frequencies, each node is equipped with two radios to handle backhaul functionality. Each of these radios transmit within the network on a different channel. This introduces the phrase multi-channel backhaul. Since each backhaul link is on a different channel, there is no longer interference when two backhaul links within the network are active at the same time. Therefore, each node is free to transmit and receive simultaneously. The bandwidth transferred over multiple hops increases dramatically because of this effect. Next, we move to modular mesh framework. The MD4000 mesh node can be outfitted with up to four radio cards. Each radio card can be configured to its own functionality and supported frequency. Functionalities include uplink radio, downlink radios, AP radios, and scanners. Supported frequencies include 802.11a channels in the 5 GHz range, 802.11b or G channels in the 2.4 GHz range, the public safety band of 4.9 GHz, as well as custom channels, which are created by the user based on center frequency and channel width. Next, we will talk about backhaul only mesh nodes. These are the simplest third generation mesh nodes, having no client or AP radios, only the uplink and downlink backhaul radios. The MD4250 AAXX is a backhaul only mesh node. It will carry a backhaul when 2.4 GHz service is not needed. The most common use of this configuration of the MD4000 is surveillance application. As can be seen in the photo to the right, the IP camera is wired directly into the mesh node. What can also be seen is that each backhaul radio gets its own antenna. Now, there are two benefits to this. The backhaul can be aimed in any given direction. In addition, a tremendous distance can be achieved between two mesh nodes with use of directional antennas. The maximum distance seen between two MD4000s in a single link is just over 14 miles. 
Next, we talk about mesh nodes with 2.4 GHz service radios. The MD4350-AAIX is our standard 3-radio 3rd generation mesh node. Two 5 GHz backhaul radios and one 2.4 GHz AP radio. Again, since the MD4000 uses multiple radios for the functions of a mesh network, this allows the use of specific antennas for each radio's function. In the photo to the right, it can be seen that each backhaul radio is aimed at different points on the horizon, and the AP radio is angled down towards clients on the ground. The fact that each radio on the mesh node can have its own antenna gives tremendous flexibility and application of the MD4000. For deployments with clusters of high client densities or unusual client distributions, multiple AP radios on the mesh node can be beneficial in achieving sufficient coverage. The MD4350-AAIX and MD4458-AAII offer one and two AP radios respectively. Antennas can be selected for these radios to optimize client coverage relative to the location of the mesh node. As can be seen in the image below, each mesh node uses a specific AP radio antenna to cater to the density and location of its clients. The dual AP radios of the MD4458-AAII are used in underground mines to shoot the service signal down the mine tunnels using highly directional antennas. Having two AP radios on the mesh node not only gives double the transmit power, but it allows the signals to be shot in different angular directions down the mine tunnels. Next, we discuss relay mesh nodes with multiple downlink radios. The backhaul structure of a mesh can benefit from a relay node having multiple downlink radios. A node with a second downlink antenna allows a branching of the backhaul. Directional antennas can be used to aim the backhaul signal to different clusters of child nodes. The MD4452-AAIA has an additional downlink radio. In the illustration below, it can be seen how the use of multiple downlinks with appropriate antennas can help strengthen the structure of a mesh. Since each downlink is on a different channel, there will be no contention between the two clusters of child nodes. Next, we talk about root nodes with multiple downlink radios. Now recall that root nodes are nodes that have a wired connection to the internet or network. Given the upper limit of the 802.11a or G protocol, the single downlink radio on a root node will supply a mesh with a maximum of 22 Mbps of TCPI throughput to or from a wired network. Since all nodes associated to this downlink must be on the same channel, the bandwidth is therefore shared amongst them. Giving a root node multiple downlink radios allows multiple channels to be used. Each new channel provided will supply the mesh with an additional 22 Mbps of TCPI throughput. Since there are four available radio slots on the MD4000, this implies a total throughput of 88 Mbps into or out of a Mesh Dynamics Mesh Network. Next topic to be covered, Mobile Mesh Nodes. Mesh Dynamics Mobile Nodes have a range of applications. The Mobility feature allows a standard MD4000 Mesh Node to make seamless on-the-fly switches from parent node to parent node. Since there are a variety of MD4000 Mesh Nodes, there are a variety of ways the mobile versions can be applied. A common use is having the mobile nodes mounted inside vehicles while the vehicles are moving through a stationary mesh. Below we see an example of a trunk mounted mobile node. Rail applications are ideal for the mobile versions of the MD4000. Mounting a mobile node to a train car will allow the train to seamlessly switch between stationary nodes along the track while giving uninterrupted bandwidth passengers or systems inside the train. This concludes the applications webcast. Thank you for listening and for further information please contact Mesh Dynamics.